Welcome to our distance learning webinar for new users. This video uh, is to support new users with getting started with assessments, as well as offering some tips for the transition to distance learning. This will be most useful for math teachers of students in grades four or higher who have a Google Classroom account, which is required to use the tool. My name is Don Peterson, Teacher Engagement Manager at the Assistance Foundation, and let's get started. The goal of today is that viewers will be able to follow the four steps of using assistments to support their distance learning. Um, the agenda is that we're going to start with just a brief overview of what assistments is, including the four steps. I'll be walking you through a demo of the assistments tool so you can see how it works, and then we'll finish out talking about some distance learning ideas. To start with a brief overview of the assistments tool, um, assistments is a free tool that supports students with immediate feedback on math assignments and provides teachers data insights to inform their instruction. Teachers create assignments in our platform using open education resources and assign right through Google Classroom. Assistments is designed to be an enhancement to what, whatever your regular classroom routine is with whatever curriculum that you're currently using. Uh, assistance is used by thousands of teachers across the United States and reaches even more students. The four steps of assistments um, walks you through the uh, teacher creating the assignment, uh, which is step one. Step two, the student completes the assignment and receives feedback as they go. Step three, the tool assesses the class performance. Um, and then step four, the teacher and the students analyze the data together. Very similar to what you would normally do with your classroom, uh, regardless of how you assign homework. And I'm gonna show you exactly what that looks like on the assistance platform. The variety of assessments content that we have uh, offers you a lot of different places to, to pull uh, assignments. Um, so first, starting with our open educational resources, we have illustrative math, uh, which is grade six through um, high school. We have uh, open up resources, which is middle school six through eight. Engage New York or Eureka Math uh, starts at first grade and runs through high school. And then the Utah Middle School Math Project, uh, also middle school six through eight. We do have a variety of practice problems from textbooks, um, skill builder, just practice sets designed, uh, organized by Common Core. Um, so a lot of different places you can pull different practice problems to assign to your students. So let's go ahead and start with step one, uh, which is the teacher gets to go onto assessments and create an assignment. So in order to do that, the, teach, uh, the teacher's gonna go to assessments.org and click on explore content, which is on the top bar. At this point, the teacher will be able to navigate through the different folders that we have and find exactly what it is that they want to push out to their students. And from there, it's as easy as just clicking on assign to Google Classroom, answering a few questions, and it pushes right out to students. So I'm just gonna go over and show you what this looks like to actually assign. Uh, so here I am at the assistance website. I'm gonna click on explore content. So you can see here that I have all my open educational resources. I can navigate through textbooks, skill builders, and practice sets, um, lots of different things to choose from. So I'm gonna go into illustrative math. Um, you can see here, we got six through high school. I'm gonna go into grade seven. Just to note, we do have the ability, once you're logged in, that you can bookmark folders if you choose. Uh, I'm gonna go into the practice problems. Just to note, whatever the um, curriculum is organized as, that's how we're gonna see it on the assistance platform as well. So illustrative math has practice problems, student facing tasks and cool downs. Uh, and once I click in as far as I can go, the deepest folder, I get to see the practice problems that are in that folder. So I have the choice as the teacher to select all the problems or just make a selection. So I'm gonna choose a few problems for this problem set. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top. At this point, again, once you're logged in, you can take a look at student view, which will show what the student's going to experience if they were to complete this problem set. Um, and then I'm gonna click on Assign to Google Classroom. 
The first time you log in, you're just going to give approval for assessments to link with your Google account, um, at which point all of your Google classes will autofill into this list. So I'm going to choose just one class, but you can choose up to uh, however many classes you need to assign this to. And I'm going to click on Next. You have the option to uh, change the name of the assignment. So I might change just the Monday homework. You can set a release date or a due date. These are not necessary to assign. You can just do that through Google Classroom or you can do it here. And once I click Assign, that's going to go live to my Google Classroom. So um, I know that I've assigned it because I come to this screen and if I click on View, that's gonna open up my Google Classroom and I'm going to see that assignment here in the stream and also in my Classwork tab. So assigning step one, very easy, push it right out immediately. And now let's go back and take a look at step two. So step two out of the four step process is ass assisting students through immediate feedback. Um, so what that means is that when, the uh, when you push the assignment out to the student, they're going to see that assignment in their Google Classroom stream. Um, when they click on the assistance link, they're going to have access to each of the questions individually. Um, they're going to get feedback. They're going to see their progress as they work through the assignment. Uh, the feedback they're going to get, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, is uh, whether they're correct, whether they uh, are incorrect and they need to try again, uh, or whether they need to access the answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is going to look like in the student view. So I am in the student's Google Classroom right now. Um, so I'm gonna go right to the Classwork tab and there's the Monday homework, which I just assigned. And I'm gonna click on the assistance link. When the student clicks on that link, they will be prompted to log in with their Google account. They will not be asked any additional account information, no, um, no birthday, no anything else. And here we are in the student view. So like I said, the student gets to see the question. Um, they get to see their progress bar over on the right, which starts at 100%. Um, they also get to see how many questions are in this problem set on the left-hand side. So if a student gets this right on the first attempt, they get that feedback that they're doing this problem correctly and they can move on. Um, for the next problem, notice this is part B of the same question since I still have access to look at that first question. So maybe the student gets it incorrect on the first try. So maybe the student tries again and they still get it incorrect. They're getting feedback as they go so they can rework their problem and the student got it right on the third attempt. So notice that the progress bar went down to 33%, which just indicates they had two incorrect answers before they got it correct. Um, and now they can move on to the next problem. Maybe you have a student who could sit and try answers. They're really struggling. They don't know how to get on to the next problem. That's what our show answer button is for. It's not a, a cop out. It's so that students can actually progress with the assignment because our platform doesn't let a student move on until they've entered the correct answer. Uh, a lot of the curriculums do have uh, open-ended questions, show or explain your work, or upload a picture, something like that. So our essay uh, scoring question um, allows students to either type into an open response box, or if they have the capabilities on their devices at home, they could take a picture of their work, take a picture of a picture, um, upload that. Um, they're not going to get immediate feedback just because the nature of the problem, but the teacher is going to have access to see all the student responses in one place. All right, so the student is done four out of four questions. Um, when they're finished, they do get to see uh, their student report, which just reminds them how they did on this practice set, gives them their average score. They can look back at each one of the questions they answer just by hovering over on the left-hand side, and they get to see how they did up against the class. So that uh, concludes step two, which is the student uh, accessing, or uh, the, the um, student view. So step three is when the teacher gets to assess the class performance. Um, so to access the data produced by the students completing their work, the teacher is going to click on the assistance link in their Google Classroom account. Recall that when the student clicked on this link, they were brought to the student view. When the teacher clicks on this link, they are brought into the student report. 
So when you uh, when you click on this, you're going to open up the the report we see below. Um, lots of different information on this report, which I'll show you in just a minute live. Um, but every move the student makes, every answer that they um, they input is going to be documented on the report that the teacher gets. So let's go ahead and take a look at that um, in our demo. So um, now that I'm back in my classwork tab, I'm just going to refresh that. Um, I click on Monday homework. I can see that one student has turned in the assignment out of tw uh, 28 that were assigned. And when I click on that, that's going to open up the report for me. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is hide student names, which we have the capability of doing. If you were sharing this um, on a Zoom call or a Google Hangout or uh, take a screenshot to share with your class, you definitely want to do that uh, first thing. So I'm just going to scroll down so you can see um, the work that I just did as a student. We get to see their, the student score. We get to see how they did, um, the amount of time that it took them. Um, and this is not a very interesting report to look at. I wanted to show you how we got there. So I'm just going to open up a more populated version of the same report. Um, so the information that you get on the report, first and foremost, is the average score uh, for the class. Um, each one of these PRA IDs is just our uh, code for the question. Um, so if this is question 1A and 1B, 2A, 2B, and this was an extra for this problem set. So we get to see the problem average right here at the top. Um, one of my favorite things, common wrong answers. Um, so this tells us that 42% of the students who got this wrong had a common misconception that allowed them to answer nine. Uh, we get to see what the correct answers were. Um, just to note, uh, if you click on this ID, uh, it's going to open up the student view of what that question was in case you don't remember what you assigned. Um, and as I scroll down, you can see there's a lot of different uh, symbols that we see here in the report. So I want to talk about those quickly. The green check mark indicates that the student got that problem right on the first attempt. The green X indicates the student got that right on the second or third attempt. Um, the red X, let me find one of those, indicates the student got this correct on their own, but it took them more than three attempts. So I'm might be a little bit more concerned about that student. And then the yellow background indicates the student who had to press show answer. So for anyone who might have been worried about that show answer button, we get to see that very clearly on the report. A um, couple other things, of course, we get to see how each student did here. And on the triple dot, we can go ahead and show that student name without um, showing all the student names at once. Um, this is also where we can delete progress. So if a student uh, wanted to redo an assignment, if they didn't understand the platform um, during the first week or two, we could delete progress and give them another shot. And we can also see the details report. The details report is going to open up a new screen, which basically gives us a play-by-play -play for the student. Um, a little bit more detail, how long it took them between their different responses, how long it took them before they had to ask for the answer. So it's a nice place to find all of that information um, all at once. Might not be something you use for every student on every assignment, but it's nice that we can dive a little deeper if we need to. Um, I also want to talk about these symbols over here on the left. Of course, if you, we see a full percentage, that means the student finished the assignment. If we see this half moon, half circle, that indicates the student is not finished, but they've scored 56% up to that point that they're at now. And then the open circle indicates that the student has not yet clicked on that and accessed the, report, uh, accessed the assignment yet. Um, for the open-ended questions or the essay uh, scoring, um, if, if the teacher wants to go in and actually provide some feedback to the students, um, this is where they'd go to record that uh, feedback. So here the teacher has the choice, I'm going to go ahead and hide student names again, has the choice to score on a four-point scale and also give feedback to the student. Uh, we also have a custom sorting feature. So for example, if you wanted to, um, to highlight some of these, um, so that you could share with students on a Zoom call or on a screenshot, something like that. Um, that's what this custom sort is. Um, I'd like to note that these do um, update live time, so there's no save button on this screen. If you leave feedback for, for the student, they're going to be able to access that um, just by clicking back into their assignment report. So let me show you that real quick because we've gotten a lot of questions on that recently. 
Um, so let's see here. So for this particular student, this was the student that I played. I'm going to go into essay scoring and I am going to, let's see, hide student names again, of course. And I'm going to leave some feedback three out of four. And I'm going to say great work. So again, no save button on the screen, but when I go back over to the student view, the student will be able to access this by clicking back into their completed assignment. So you'll have to instruct them to do that in Google Classroom, and then we get to see the three out of four and the teacher comment. All right, so um, that concludes the um, assessment portion, which is being able to access the report. Um, so let's go back over here and let's talk about step four, analyzing the answers together. So in a classroom environment, we would be recommending that teachers share this report up on the smart board, celebrate successes, uh, discuss uh, struggle, the problems that the class struggled on, um, even regroup students um, based on their ability. And this is where we're gonna get a little bit creative um, with the recommendations for distance learning. So we're gonna, uh, that's a good segue into that section. So distance learning ideas, um, using assessments. So um, let's talk about analyzing those answers together. Uh, so one suggestion that we have is taking a screenshot of that anonymized report and sending it out to students, asking them what they wonder, asking them what they notice, um, asking them what, what problems that, that you think you need to talk about as a class or maybe um, that the teacher needs to provide extra support on. Um, I think involving those students with that assignment report or with the data report um, is really helpful because the students get to see how the class did, what they answered, um, and they have a little bit more interaction with kind of the classroom setting even though they're sitting at home. Another recommendation would be to, um, to use those common wrong answers uh, if they exist on the, the data report. Have students write about how to get that answer, why it's wrong, how to remedy the answer. You might have students write a letter to any student that had a common mi misconception um, based on the data that we see in the report. Um, so a lot of different activities can be structured around the common wrong answers on the data report. Uh, another recommendation would be uh, definitely getting, getting in touch with the students, whether it be through the email feature on Google Classroom, where you can email select students or a group of students, um, or you could use the class comment code, like I'm recommended, um, if you want students to go back in and look at the data you left um, in the essay scoring section, um, you can note that they should look back into their assignment um, under class comments. Um, if you know how to use Screencastify or um, want to learn, I've included a link um, in, the, um, in the presentation here. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, record you discussing the, the uh, assignment report, um, talk about things that you would really talk about with them in class, highlight the uh, where students had misconceptions with the common wrong answers, talk about um, where, where students really had successes or really had struggles, um, and you can do that in a video and then share it out with students on Google Classroom. And then lastly, uh, if you have the ability to have a Zoom call or a Google Hangout, go over the homework with the students uh, using the assignment report, using the data report, um, and talk about everything that you would share with them in a classroom setting uh, right there with them. Ask them about the, the wonder and notice. Ask them about um, which problems they really struggled on. And this is really a good kickoff point to going over the homework. Some suggestions to get started. Um, first, let the students know you're there and that you're there to help and monitor their progress. Um, you're always looking at that report. If you see a student that's really struggling or a student that, um, that's having really a really great success, send them a message, send them a note, let them know you're there because uh, some of these students are feeling really lonely at home and want their teacher <laughs> watching over them. Um, I definitely recommend setting expectations and communicating how you're using the scoring um, with these classes. Some students aren't used to seeing maybe the lower percentages um, when they look at the 
at, at their data. Um, and that might really freak them out at the beginning and also their parents. So think about how you're going to use the percentages and the scoring on our data reports uh, so that you can communicate that and really reduce a lot of anxieties. Keep in mind also that the assessments tool is designed to be formative. Students get multiple opportunities to, uh, to improve, to answer correctly. Um, so we wanna give them credit where credit's due. Another tip uh, to getting started would be uh, just know that it takes a few assignments before you and your students are going to get comfortable. Um, Students may have a tough time getting started just because it, it, it's new to them. Um, so let them know that, that it's new for you too. Um, like I said, we have that delete progress feature. So if a student really is struggling, we can't allow them to redo their work um, and let them know you're in it together. And lastly, be proactive about the students who are not doing their work or gaming the system, pressing that show answer button much too often, taking too little time or too much time. We have access to all that data. So it may just be a quick email or note to that student to let them know you're watching their progress and things may turn around. Uh, I want to note that we do have a lot of resources on our in our help center on our website. Uh, in the distance learning help center, which I'm actually going to show you real quickly how to navigate right from the website. Um, so right here at assistance.org, up at the top we have the COVID-19 help center. We have a lot of resources on this page uh, that may be very helpful to you. Uh, we have some videos, some, some downloads, um, a teacher cheat sheet, a letter to parents that you may post on your Google Classroom account um, to share what is assistance. Um, we have uh, drop-in help sessions, uh, a lot of different things you can do here, our email, join our Facebook community. So lots of places that you can go. In addition to, um, under how it works, we have some user resources there as well, uh, including how-to guides, how can I's, which is kind of like an FAQ page. Um, so some places to go to, to find the answers that you need uh, if you're getting stuck anywhere. All right, and I just talked about that. Uh, again, join our Facebook community. We'd love to have you there sharing ideas, troubleshooting with our other uh, assistance users. Um, and once again, uh, visit our website, assistance.org, or please email us at contact at assistance.org if you need any help, um, any troubleshooting, or have any questions at all. Thank you for joining us today um, at the assistance new user uh, distance learning video, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon.